The majesty of these inaccessible mountains has been viewed by few white people. The jagged peaks stand like sentinels in the night, guarding its rare treasures. The raging river complements the surroundings. It is wild, turbulent, and untamed, as if it were a giant dragon refusing human subjugation with the spirited determination of a conqueror. This turbulent river, called by the Indians, who were wise in the ways of nature, the river of no return, the white man called it the Salmon River. It is located in the wildest and most inaccessible part of the United States, in Idaho. Few white men have ever dared to trespass into its sacred domain. The wild spray and foam conceal the razor-edged rocks that can rip the bottom out of a boat. A moment's carelessness can mean instant death. Its 150 rapids are a constant menace. The 3,300-foot drop over a distance of 310 miles precludes any possibility of return. This is a constant combat against nature's forces. The Game Commission organized this hazardous expedition for scientific research of the surrounding valleys. In the hopes of lessening the dangers of the perilous journey, this boat was especially built. Bow and stern sweeps aided in keeping the boat off the rocks. Andy, the Russian, has lived at the river's edge for over 37 years, panning gold, never once leaving its side. Once a year, a boat brings him provisions, and his meager supply of gold pays for his simple and primitive needs. The charter of the one-way club is this simple plaque. Its membership consists of the adventurous men who can shoot the rapids of the river of no return and survive. For those men who founded the club, this is journey's end. Monterey, July 7th, 1846. The United States Marines are landing to take possession of the Californias. The day is one of both great rejoicing and deep sadness for the people. Some of our most prominent American citizens, having married Californians and found life pleasant, are sympathetic to the old rule. Whereas other Americans, particularly in the Sacramento Valley, have always felt a resentment toward the Mexican government. The proclamation bringing this vast Western territory into the Union is now being read to the people, and assurance is given all that they will be treated as Americans, unless their actions demand other treatment. This is not the first time the United States flag has been raised over Monterey, as you no doubt remember. It was in 1842 that Commodore Jones heard reports that Mexico had declared war on the United States and were giving the Californians to the British for safekeeping. On October 19th, he entered the harbor and demanded the surrender of Monterey and raised the flag, only to learn that the reports had been ill-founded. And now it is fiesta time. Gaiety and dancing must always follow a celebration, and this is no exception. The American servicemen have expressed a willingness to stay and settle the Californias for the United States. After glancing over the Spanish beauties, you can't blame them. And they still insist that it is patriotism. The famed Half Dome of Yosemite forms a backdrop of unparalleled beauty. Its rugged magnificence and grandeur thrills thousands each year. One of the most outstanding climbing clubs of America is the Rock Climbers of the Sierra Club. It is composed of prominent Californians who lead quiet lives in town, but for a pastime seek the dangers and thrills of precarious mountain climbing. Dual personalities, I call it. They won their reputation by ascending the most hazardous mountains in the West. The mountains are equal to the most difficult and dangerous in the world. Each ascent presents its own individual problems. Dangers that can't be planned. A loose rock, a slip of the foot can mean disaster or death. Thank you. 
There is only one rule that is strictly enforced. If a man falls and breaks his neck, his membership is automatically canceled. Howdy, folks. This is a real Western Rodeo, and the boys are out to provide a lot of excitement and broken bones. As you know, a rodeo is one of the big social events in these parts, and the whole countryside is out to cheer the cowboys on. Steer riding is about as rough a ride as bronc riding. These bucking beefsteaks don't want men on their backs. Some of the boys ride using no hands. Of course, that doesn't help them stay on any longer. I don't think this makes the beef any more tender. They may be bucking steers to you boys, but to me, they're just steaks on the hoof. What some men will do for excitement and a little prize money. Even the calves aren't immune. Calf roping, though it looks simple, requires speed and precision. And the little ones just aren't cooperating. That's one that got away. Hey, they're getting bigger all the time. I wonder if I could do it in uh, 10 easy lessons. This is the major event of the day. The boys are all out for a good time and have put up their own money for the stakes. Some of these cowboys earn their living by just riding the rodeo circuit and picking up the prize money. There must be an easier way to make a living. Ooh, right on his face. They say, Bub, you can't get out of riding by lying down on the job. Frog jumping is rather hard on the liver. The cowboys, I mean. Ride em, cowboy. This is a very good reducing exercise for fat women. It will not only guarantee to make them lose weight, but also the horse. Oh, don't feel so bad, partner. In this game, you never know who is going to come out on top. <laughs> 